Day 61 To be vulnerable Brene Brown Step 1 Preview Vulnerability is not weakness. I define vulnerability as emotional risk, exposure, uncertainty. It fuels our daily lives, and I've come to the belief, this is my 12th year doing this research, that vulnerability is our most accurate measurement of courage, to be vulnerable, to let ourselves be seen, to be honest. Step 2. Sentence. Number 1. Vulnerability is not weakness. Number 2. I define vulnerability as emotional risk, exposure, uncertainty. Number 3. It fuels our daily lives. Number 4. And I've come to the belief. Number 5. This is my 12th year doing this research. Number 6. That vulnerability is our most accurate measurement of courage. Number 7. To be vulnerable. To let ourselves be seen. To be honest. Step 3. Paragraph. Vulnerability is not weakness. I define vulnerability as emotional risk, exposure, uncertainty. It fuels our daily lives. And I've come to the belief, this is my 12th year doing this research, that vulnerability is our most accurate measurement of courage, to be vulnerable, to let ourselves be seen, to be honest. Step 4. Exercise. Number 1. Vulnerability is not weakness. Number 2. I've come to the belief. Number 3. This is my 12th year doing this research. Day 62. The Secret to Life. Susan Cain. Step 1. Preview. The secret to life is to put yourself in the right lighting. For some, it's a Broadway spotlight. For others, a lamplit desk. Use your natural powers of persistence, concentration, and insight to do work you love and work that matters. Solve problems, make art, think deeply. Step 2. Sentence. Number 1. The secret to life is to put yourself in the right lighting. Number 2. For some, it's a Broadway spotlight. Number 3. For others, a lamplit desk. Number 4. Use your natural powers of persistence, concentration, and insight. Number 5. To do work you love and work that matters. Number 6. Solve problems, make art, think deeply. Step 3. Paragraph. The secret to life is to put yourself in the right lighting. For some, it's a Broadway spotlight. For others, a lamplit desk. Use your natural powers of persistence, concentration, and insight to do work you love and work that matters. Solve problems, make art, think deeply. Step 4. Exercise. Number 1. The secret to life is to put yourself in the right lighting. Number 2. Use your natural powers of persistence, concentration, and insight. Number 3. Solve problems, make art, think deeply. Day 63. Leading versus being the leader. Simon Sinek. Step 1. Preview. Leading is not the same as being the leader. Being the leader means you hold the highest rank, either by earning it, good fortune, or navigating internal politics. Leading, however, means that others willingly follow you, not because they have to, 
not because they are paid to, but because they want to. Step 2. Sentence. Number 1. Leading is not the same as being the leader. Number 2. Being the leader means you hold the highest rank. Number 3. Either by earning it, good fortune, or navigating internal politics. Number 4. Leading, however, means that others willingly follow you. Number 5. Not because they have to, not because they are paid to, but because they want to. Step 3. Paragraph. Leading is not the same as being the leader. Being the leader means you hold the highest rank, either by earning it, good fortune, or navigating internal politics. Leading, however, means that others willingly follow you, not because they have to, not because they are paid to, but because they want to. Step 4. Exercise. Number 1. Leading is not the same as being the leader. Number 2. You hold the highest rank. Number 3. Others willingly follow you. Day 64. Impossible is not a fact. John C. Maxwell. Step 1. Preview. Impossible is just a big word thrown around by small men who find it easier to live in the world they've been given than to explore the power they have to change it. Impossible is not a fact. It's an opinion. Impossible is not a declaration. It's a dare. Impossible is potential. Impossible is temporary. Impossible is nothing. Step 2. Sentence. Number 1. Impossible is just a big word. Number 2. Thrown around by small men who find it easier. Number 3. To live in the world they've been given. Number 4. Then to explore the power they have to change it. Number 5. Impossible is not a fact. It's an opinion. Number 6. Impossible is not a declaration. It's a dare. Number 7. Impossible is potential. Impossible is temporary. Impossible is nothing. Step 3. Paragraph. Impossible is just a big word thrown around by small men who find it easier to live in the world they've been given than to explore the power they have to change it. Impossible is not a fact. It's an opinion. Impossible is not a declaration. It's a dare. Impossible is potential. Impossible is temporary. Impossible is nothing. Step 4. Exercise. Number 1. Impossible is not a fact. It's an opinion. Number 2. Impossible is not a declaration. It's a dare. Number 3. Impossible is nothing. Day 65. Far more pain in hiding in the shadows. Ted Cruz. Step 1. Preview. I will stay standing here after 14 hours. Standing on your feet, there's sometimes some pain, sometimes some fatigue that is involved. But you know what? There's far more pain involved in rolling over. Far more pain in hiding in the shadows. Far more pain in not standing for principle. Not standing for the good. Not standing for integrity. Step 2. Sentence. Number 1. I will stay standing here after 14 hours. Number 2. Standing on your feet, 
There's sometimes some pain. Number three. Sometimes some fatigue that is involved. Number four. But you know what? There's far more pain involved in rolling over. Number five. Far more pain in hiding in the shadows. Number six. Far more pain in not standing for principle. Number seven. Not standing for the good. Not standing for integrity. Step three, paragraph. I will stay standing here after fourteen hours. Standing on your feet, there's sometimes some pain, sometimes some fatigue that is involved. But you know what? There's far more pain involved in rolling over, far more pain in hiding in the shadows, far more pain in not standing for principle. Not standing for the good, not standing for integrity. Step four, exercise. Number one, I will stay standing here. Number two, there's far more pain in hiding in the shadows. Number three, there's far more pain in not standing for principle. Day sixty-six. When you lose small businesses, Ted Turner. Step one, preview. When you lose small businesses, you lose big ideas. People who own their own businesses are their own bosses. They are independent thinkers. They know they can't compete by imitating the big guys. They have to innovate. So they are less obsessed with earnings than they are with ideas. Step two, sentence. Number one. When you lose small businesses, you lose big ideas. Number two. People who own their own businesses are their own bosses. Number three. They are independent thinkers. Number four. They know they can't compete by imitating the big guys. Number five. They have to innovate. Number six. So they are less obsessed with earnings than they are with ideas. Step three, paragraph. When you lose small businesses, you lose big ideas. People who own their own businesses are their own bosses. They are independent thinkers. They know they can't compete by imitating the big guys. They have to innovate, so they are less obsessed with earnings than they are with ideas. Step four, exercise. Number one. People who own their own businesses are their own bosses. Number two. They know they can't compete by imitating. Number three. They are less obsessed with earnings. Day sixty-seven. It is all about building confidence. Jill Biden. Step one. Preview. No matter what teaching methods I have changed, I have found the same premise to be true over time. It's all about building confidence in your students. The bottom line is that. At the end of the day, they need to believe that they have the skills they require to be successful. Step two, sentence. Number one. No matter what teaching methods I have changed. Number two. I have found the same premise to be true over time. Number three. It's all about finding confidence in your students. Number four. The bottom line is that at the end of the day. Number five. They need to believe that they have the skills they require to be successful. Step three. Paragraph. No matter what teaching methods I have changed, I have found the same premise to be true over time. It's all about building confidence in your students. 
The bottom line is that at the end of the day, they need to believe that they have the skills they require to be successful. Step 4 Exercise. Number 1. I have changed teaching methods. Number 2. I have found the same premise to be true. Number 3. They have the skills they require to be successful. Day 68. Believe in your own strength. Barbara Streisand. Step 1. Preview. To have ego means to believe in your own strength and to also be open to other people's views. It is to be open, not closed. So yes, my ego is big, but it's also very small in some areas. My ego is responsible for my doing what I do, bad or good. Step 2. Sentence. Number 1. To have ego means to believe in your own strength. Number 2. And to also be open to other people's views. Number 3. It is to be open, not closed. Number 4. So yes, my ego is big, but it's also very small in some areas. Number 5. My ego is responsible for my doing what I do, bad or good. Step 3. Paragraph. To have ego means to believe in your own strength and to also be open to other people's views. It is to be open, not closed. So yes, my ego is big, but it's also very small in some areas. My ego is responsible for my doing what I do, bad or good. Step 4. Exercise. Number 1. To have ego means to believe in your own strength. Number 2. It is to be open, not closed. Number 3. My ego is responsible for my doing what I do. Day 69. We don't know how strong we are. Isabella Lend. Step 1. Preview. I never said I wanted a happy life, but an interesting one. From separation and loss, I have learned a lot. I have become strong and resilient, as is the case of almost every human being exposed to life and to the world. We don't even know how strong we are until we are forced to bring that hidden strength forward. Step 2. Sentence. Number 1. I never said I wanted a happy life, but an interesting one. Number 2. From separation and loss, I have learned a lot. Number 3. I have become strong and resilient. Number 4. As is the case of almost every human being exposed to life and to the world. Number 5. We don't even know how strong we are. Number 6. Until we are forced to bring that hidden strength forward. Step 3. Paragraph. I never said I wanted a happy life, but an interesting one. From separation and loss, I have learned a lot. I have become strong and resilient, as is the case of almost every human being exposed to life and to the world. We don't even know how strong we are until we are forced to bring that hidden strength forward. Step 4. Exercise. Number 1. I never said I wanted a happy life. Number 2. From separation and loss, I have learned a lot. Number 3. We are forced to bring that hidden strength forward. Day 70. Do the best you can. Clint Eastwood. Step 1. Preview. God gave you a brain. Do the best you can with it. And you don't have to be Einstein. 
But Einstein was mentally tough. He believed what he believed, and he worked out things. And he argued with people who disagreed with him. But I'm sure he didn't call everybody jerks. Step two, sentence. Number one. God gave you a brain. Number two. Do the best you can with it. Number three. And you don't have to be Einstein, but Einstein was mentally tough. Number four. He believed what he believed. Number five. And he worked out things. Number six. And he argued with people who disagreed with him. Number seven. But I'm sure he didn't call everybody jerks. Step three, paragraph. God gave you a brain. Do the best you can with it. And you don't have to be Einstein. But Einstein was mentally tough. He believed what he believed, and he worked out things. And he argued with people who disagreed with him. But I'm sure he didn't call everybody jerks. Step four, exercise. Number one. God gave you a brain. Number two. He believed what he believed. Number three. He argued with people who disagreed with him. Day seventy one. Learn how to accept love. Toni Morrison. Step one. Preview. You do not deserve love, regardless of the suffering you have endured. You do not deserve love because somebody did you wrong. You do not deserve love just because you want it. You can only earn, by practice and careful contemplations, the right to express it, and you have to learn how to accept it. Step two, sentence. Number one. You do not deserve love, regardless of the suffering you have endured. Number two. You do not deserve love because somebody did you wrong. Number three. You do not deserve love just because you want it. Number four. You can only earn, by practice and careful contemplations, the right to express it. Number five. And you have to learn how to accept it. Step three, paragraph. You do not deserve love regardless of the suffering you have endured. You do not deserve love because somebody did you wrong. You do not deserve love just because you want it. You can only earn, by practice and careful contemplations, the right to express it, and you have to learn how to accept it. Step four, exercise. Number one, you do not deserve love. Number two, somebody did you wrong. Number three, you have to learn how to accept it. Day seventy-two. I wonder why I can be so happy. Ray Bradbury. Step one, preview. In my later years, I have looked in the mirror each day and found a happy person staring back. Occasionally, I wonder why I can be so happy. The answer is that every day of my life, I've worked only for myself and for the joy that comes from writing and creating. The image in my mirror is not optimistic, but the result of optimal behavior. Step two. Sentence. Number one. In my later years, I have looked in the mirror each day and found a happy person staring back. Number two. Occasionally, I wonder why I can be so happy. Number three. The answer is that every day of my life, I've worked only for myself. Number four. And for the joy that comes from writing and creating. Number five. 
The image in my mirror is not optimistic, but the result of optimal behavior. Step three, paragraph. In my later years, I have looked in the mirror each day and found a happy person staring back. Occasionally, I wonder why I can be so happy. The answer is that every day of my life, I've worked only for myself and for the joy that comes from writing and creating. The image in my mirror is not optimistic, but the result of optimal behavior. Step four, exercise. Number one, I have looked in the mirror each day. Number two, I wonder why I can be so happy. Number three, the image in my mirror is not optimistic. Day seventy-three. What you do with your fear, Carly Fiorina. Step one, preview. The difference between people who succeed and people who fail, I think, in many cases, it's not fear. Everyone experiences fear. The difference is what you do with your fear. Do you work to overcome it, or do you let it defeat you? And I think that is actually what distinguishes very successful people from others. Step two, sentence. Number one. The difference between people who succeed and people who fail, I think, in many cases, it's not fear. Number two. Everyone experiences fear. Number three. The difference is what you do with your fear. Number four. Do you work to overcome it, or do you let it defeat you? Number five. And I think that is actually what distinguishes very successful people from others. Step three. Paragraph. The difference between people who succeed and people who fail, I think, in many cases, it's not fear. Everyone experiences fear. The difference is what you do with your fear. Do you work to overcome it, or do you let it defeat you? And I think that is actually what distinguishes very successful people from others. Step four, exercise. Number one. The difference between people who succeed and people who fail is not fear. Number two. The difference is what you do with your fear. Number three. Do you work to overcome fear? Day seventy-four. Be open and learn. Bobby Brown. Step one. Preview. Work hard, but work smart. Always, every day, nothing is handed to you, and nothing is easy. You're not owed anything. No job or task is too small or beneath you. If you want to get ahead, volunteer to do the things no one else wants to do, and do it better. Be a sponge. Be open and learn. Step two, sentence. Number one. Work hard, but work smart. Always. Every day. Number two. Nothing is handed to you, and nothing is easy. Number three. You're not owed anything. Number four. No job or task is too small or beneath you. Number five. If you want to get ahead, volunteer to do the things no one else wants to do, and do it better. Number six. Be a sponge. Be open and learn. Step three, paragraph. Work hard, but work smart. Always, every day. Nothing is handed to you, and nothing is easy. You're not owed anything. No job or task is too small or beneath you. If you want to get ahead, volunteer to do the things no one else wants to do, and do it better. Be a sponge. Be open and learn. Step four, exercise. Number one, work hard but work smart. Number two, nothing is handed to you. 
Number three. Volunteer to do the things no one else wants to do. Day seventy-five. And then there is a lie, Lady Gaga. Step one. Preview. What I've discovered is that in art, as in music, there's a lot of truth, and then there's a lie. The artist is essentially creating his work to make this lie a truth, but he slides it in amongst all the others. The tiny little lie is the moment I live for, my moment. It's the moment that the audience falls in love. Step two, sentence. Number one. What I've discovered is that in art, as in music, there's a lot of truth. Number two. And then there's a lie. Number three. The artist is essentially creating his work to make this lie a truth. Number four. But he slides it in amongst all the others. Number five. The tiny little lie is the moment I live for. My moment. Number six. It's the moment that the audience falls in love. Step three. Paragraph. What I've discovered is that in art, as in music, there's a lot of truth, and then there's a lie. The artist is essentially creating his work to make this lie a truth, but he slides it in amongst all the others. The tiny little lie. Is the moment I live for my moment? It's the moment that the audience falls in love. Step four, exercise. Number one. What I've discovered is that in art there's a lot of truth. Number two. The artist is essentially creating his work. Number three. It's the moment that the audience falls in love.